Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Raul, and this week I wanted to show you one of my, uh, uh, it's not an older build, but it is when I got back into the hobby. Um, so shortly after 2000, somewhere right around there, I built this. But uh, this is a Revell 65 Shelby GT350, uh, the stock version. <clears throat> so if you're into Shelby's or know the story on the, the 65, um, I'll get into that. But, um, you know, in uh, 64, um, Carroll Shelby was real busy with his Cobras and his uh, um, racing and everything. And, and uh, Ford was providing him with the motors and, and some support with that. So Ford came to him and told him they would like him to make a, a race car out of their Mustang. And uh, as, as it goes, he told Lee Iacocca, you can't make a racehorse out of a mule. And uh, which Lee Iacocca told him, I didn't ask you to do it. You work for me. So Carroll reluctantly uh, took on the challenge of turning the, the Mustang into a race car. And they wanted to race it in a SCCA B production um, class. So um, review and, and, and getting into that, um, Ford had tried without Carroll Shelby to submit it and they were told no so Carol Shelby got involved and of course it's a sports car class the Mustang has a back seat so the first thing Carol Shelby realized is we've got to get rid of that back seat and then it'll qualify as a sports car and we've got to do a couple things um, but as rules allowed they had to build at least a hundred cars homologated for racing and uh, Carol Shelby had realized he was I don't think I can sell a hundred race cars um, so he got to developing the Mustang and one of the first things they had all found out is it doesn't handle very well. Um, it had basically all of the Falcon underpinnings and it wasn't built to handle, it was built to cruise and whatnot. So when they decided they were going to go into it and then rules stated that they could modify the engine for the race car or they can modify the chassis for the race car but they could not do both. So sitting down with Ford and everybody when they decided that they were going to make this car that uh, they figured out quickly that if we build it with the 289 K code engine leave that pretty much alone internally and modify the suspension and everything we can to make this thing handle um, and sell that as the production car then all we need to do is modify the engine for the actual race car and Ford was great with that because that meant they weren't modifying the engine and Shelby really only had to mod the warranty, the chassis and what they did to that. And Ford could leave the engine alone, which made me laugh because Ford's warranty at the time on their performance cars was 4,000 miles or 90 days. So how's that for a warranty? So anyway, Shelby ordered all of these 65 Mustangs. They ordered uh, the first batch of 100, um, 289 K-code engines, uh, no hood, basic strippers, plain steel wheels, and a base interior. All of them were four speeds. They put the T10 aluminum case Borg Warner in it, um, close ratio. Not exactly the same four speed that you got when you ordered a regular Mustang 2 plus 2 fastback. And then they also put in an eight, uh, the Ford 9-inch. 3.89 Detroit Locker differential in it. That D Detroit Locker was noisy, ratchety, but it was great for racing. They actually were building race cars for the street. And as they found out when they were selling these cars, that um, it didn't go over too well. And what more people actually wanted was a street car that looked like a race car, not a race car dressed for the street. Um, they did not come with radios. Um, four speeds only, no AC, uh, no, no radio or heater, um, pretty bare bones car. Um, one of the things I made a mistake on this particular one that I didn't realize, none of the 65 Shelby's have backup lights. That was actually a 65 option. Um, so if you see a 65 Mustang without backup lights, it was an option. Became mandatory in 66. Another thing that was an option that I found out in 65 Mustangs was the four-way hazards they were mandatory in 66 
but it was an option in 65. So it's possible to find a 65 or a 64 and a half Mustang without hazards or backup lights. Even though technically by four there is no 64 and a half Mustangs, they're all 65s. But there are differences. Um, but getting away from that, uh, another thing Shelby did was they revised the geometry of the suspension. They moved the upper control arm mounting down one inch, which changed the geometry in the way it handled. They put Coney shocks in it. They were all manual steering cars, and he modified the pitman arm, made it a little bit longer, so their steering became a faster ratio of steering, um, but it became more of a handful to drive on the street um, because it was more effort in the steering at slow speeds. Also, this factory exhaust that they put on it, they put the tri -wide headers on it, and then they put the exhaust and the side pipes and the glass packs on them. Um, very loud for the street. Some of their customers complained about it. And it was New Jersey and California. This exhaust was actually illegal. So if you bought one of these and had one in California or New Jersey, you could actually get a ticket for this exhaust. So for 65, they all had it. Um, but it wasn't technically legal in two states. Now remember, Carol Shelby was learning all of this as he was going. So they had some running changes. Um, so And they also put the overrider traction bars, which are in the kit. And then they modified them. They went over the leaf springs, went through and were mounted under the rear seat which had the fiberglass delete panel they also put the spare tire right over the rear axle and they did that for weight reasons um, they also ran 15 inch wheels on these and they ran the bigger brakes they had the 11.3 inch discs in the front and from the galaxy wagon the 10 by two and a half inch drums but they put the metallic linings in them um, another thing that was kind of a problem on the street is didn't stop real well until you heated up the brakes and then it stopped um, much better but still it was a race car for the street not really a street car dressed up as a race car um, also it had the fiberglass hood um, some of them had the steel underside some didn't and then another thing since he left the engines pretty much stock he rated them at 306 horsepower instead of 271 but he put his own aluminum intake high rise took the uh, 4100 uh, Autolite carburetor off and put a 715 CFM Holly carburetor on it and then uh, with those two mods and then the valve covers and then the oil pan um, which got more oil and cornering because that was actually a problem so they needed to put that pan on there um, and it was a uh, um, other st stock cam they didn't do anything to the cam or the internals of the motor so when it came to the actual race cars, they modified the motor, but the stock cars had all the suspension for the street. So they were rougher riding, better handling, put a one inch sway bar in the front. So there was a lot of modifications on the real car. So, um, great car. Another thing they did is they actually put, um, Carroll Shelby was a Goodyear tire dealer and he made sure to put the best Goodyear tire they had on the 65s, the blue dot is what they call them um, because they had a blue dot right on the sidewall and that was their race tire it was a 135 mile an hour speed rated tire so um, after they had figured all this out and and got the cars built and were getting them getting them going uh, when SCCA came down to look at it they didn't expect to see a hundred cars built and they did have their hundred cars built so they were legalized to go racing um, so he did he did really well with it and to his surprise he didn't expect to sell 100 cars he ended up selling 562 cars and 36 of them were R models the R models are the race cars if you don't know and the VIN the Shelby VIN actually had an R the first digit was 5 the second digit was R or S for race or street and then the other six digits were the serial number which would be like for the last one would be 0562 but one of the first R models was 5R002 and then it'd be 5S249 for streetcar. But uh, that briefly jumps into the history of these cars. Another thing that's interesting, if you follow and research these cars, the restored ones, you always see them with the stripes and you always, almost always see them with these uh, uh, um, Krager mags that were specially made strictly for Shelby. 
some of the early cars did not have the CS logo on it, but they did add that. And another thing is uh, not all 65s have the GT350 badge that comes back here. Early cars did not. Later cars started to appear, but you would see that on all 66s. And like I said, the kit comes with these backup lights, but they should not be on a 65 Shelby. Um, you got to sand off the emblems that are molded into the body right here, and uh, which I did on this one. And what's interesting is, like I was getting into the stripes, the real cars, they say numbers I've read is about 28% of them got the Le Mans stripes from the factory. They were later painted on by the dealers or when they were restored they were added. They all came with the side stripes, the GT350. Another interesting fact from the car is Shelby stated as saying, um, what do we want to call this car? Because they were calling it the Mustang Cobra in, the, in production and he didn't like that idea. And in one of the meetings they said, well, what Carol Shelby asked the guys, what's the distance between the race shop and uh, the sales shop? And William said, about 350 feet. And he said, okay, we'll call it the GT350. And some of them were like, well, why? That doesn't make any sense. He goes, well, he goes, basically, if it's a good car, the name's not going to matter. If it's a horrible car, the name is not going to save it. So, I mean, that pretty much concludes the the 65 Shelby. But uh, this is a, a, a kit that I've wanted for a long time. I really love the Ravel Mustang kits. I built a lot of these. So you'll see videos of some of the other ones I built. Like I said, this one's kind of an older build. Um, did it in the early 2000s, so it's 15 years old or more. Um, really love it. But I got two more, so I'm going to build a couple more. And this one I'm going to leave alone as it is. But I do wish the decals were a little bit better. Um, you can see I touched up the scoop right in the front with some blue because it didn't get all the way in there. And I didn't get the blue on there as well. Um, so I recommend painting the stripes on. Another interesting thing is the, the gas cap on the 65 Shelby GT350s is just the plain old Mustang gas cap. Um, he removed all the Mustang emblems off the car. Um, left this one on the front and then a couple. And then, you know, it's got the 65 gauges and a 65 dash. and The, the model kit is actually really accurate. Um, I don't know why Ravel has never reissued this kit. Um, wish they would. They've done all the rest of the versions, but uh, they didn't reissue this kit. But uh, uh, it's just one of my favorites. I've been building a lot of these since I was a kid. It was one of my first. Um, the '66 was one of my first uh, Ravel kits, and I just I just love this tool and and it's just a, a really good kit. Presents really well. Builds builds pretty easily. But it's a really, really nice kit. And for some reason, this was issued in 85 and never reissued. So I didn't get it the first time. So I had to wait till um, eBay started to come along and then I could find them. Um, they're much easier to find now on eBay versus back then. But because uh, eBay was just getting started. Um, so some of the vintage kits, I remember buying some of them for $100 that are now going for three or $400. But this particular one, I remember... They rarely came up, and I paid like $40 for it, where now they pop up, and you get it for $20, $25, and they pop up much more regularly. But uh, just wanted to show you this one, and just go over it with you, and some of the stories and features behind um, the 65 Shelby. And I do plan to build uh, another one, but I'm going to do it as most of them actually came, which is without the stripes and the steel wheels instead of the, the Krager mags. But uh, so that's, that's pretty much it for my 65 Shelby GT350. Thank you for watching and tuning in and letting me ramble on about some of the history and some of the, the neat things that I find and read when I'm researching these vehicles. But it's a, it's a fun car with a great story. And even though it looks a lot like the 66, I'll cover a 66 later because there was a lot of changes that they went through and they did because... Like I said, this they discovered is more of a race car for the street and the public wanted more of a race car looking car but street car. So you you know the 65, they were all four speeds and they all had the lockers and ratcheting and they were much more effort to drive. Um, so it's more of a race car and a pure Shelby as, as the purists go. This is 
This is the Shelby. You can buy this and virtually race it uh, the way they came. But um, appreciate you tuning in and listening to me. Thank you for subscribing, and, and you guys have a wonderful day.